I finally have it. I've been trying to get this for quite a while, but here it is. SA 2600. But here's the thing. This isn't my first time making this video. I actually already recorded this video and in doing so I found some real opportunities for this to improve and make it a perfect biomed tool. So I took those concerns over to the guys at BC Group and believe it or not, they implemented them and this is the final product. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out together coming up next right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're gonna go ahead and do another 4 a.m. recording where we go over the brand new SA2600 from BC Group. Guys, this thing is amazing. It's, it's amazingly familiar if you've worked with any BC Group electro safety analyzers in the past, but at the same time, it's got some new crazy features and some features that even I haven't even seen yet because I suggested these changes and they went ahead and implemented them. I have not seen them yet. We're gonna do that together right here. So first off, I wanna show you that it does come in a case just like this. And inside that case, you have a rather long test cable. This is very, very stretchy. Um, and, and you have your device, which is hardwired. Take a look at that. So it's a hard, I love hardwired devices, guys. I really do because for one, one really good reason that I love hardware cases. Look at this. You can fit the whole thing in with the cord still attached. There are many electro safety analyzers on the market right now, which you cannot do that. You cannot put the device into the case while the cord is attached. And guys, this isn't just a standard cord. Now, it is almost the gauge that I would suspect for a 20 amp. It's, it's pretty hefty right here. It's uh, what, a 14 by three? It's, yeah, it's 14 by three. So uh, pretty hefty cable on it. This is the analyzer itself and this is the very familiar BC Group connector. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that guy in the chassis. Let's go ahead and go over the outside and some of the features on this guy, okay? Right off the bat, you probably recognize the fact that it's got two different layers of ECG input outputs etc we have two different ports right here for your probe we have external and chassis very familiar from other electro safety analyzers we have your outlet right here which you know it is a 20 amp and then also we have hot neutral ground and polarity and notice how there is a line that shows you that these buttons are directly related to the output of the receptacle. I love that, okay? And they have LEDs right on the front, very easy to understand. But we're not done here, guys, because we have a little port right here, which is for software updates, firmware updates, uh, which I did utilize in order to upgrade this guy with my suggestions. And uh, over here on the other side, we have a couple other ports. So we have high level ECG output. It's uh, one volt peak to peak. We have earth ground resistance, one ohm, which we are gonna use in just a moment. And we have a leakage test button for 100 microamps, which is also for testing your meter to make sure everything's copacetic. So let's go ahead and plug it in right now. I'm gonna show you guys how fast this thing boots up because that is extremely important. If I am taking this thing, putting it in my bag, moving from location to location, it's boot up time is essential to be minimal as possible. I think the boot up time is about three to four seconds. Ready, set, go. There it is. That's it. You are up, you're ready to go. And right here on the main screen, we have auto sequence. Sorry, let me stabilize it for you. We have earth resistance. We have leakage modes mains voltage and we also have device current which i love that they got device current right here on the main page of the touchscreen and we also have ecg modes we have settings down here and you can notice up here that this guy is bluetooth because it interfaces with the bc group app 
which is pretty cool. I will probably do a whole nother video on the VC Group app in itself. One of the things I do want to show you is that it is very responsive for a touchscreen. Uh, first, let me make sure that I angle this guy correctly. I want to make sure that you guys get a correct picture. There we go. <laughs> it's the LED overhead lights. They just give me a complete washout. I can see it, but the camera, being at the angle it is, it looks like it is completely washed out. This screen is actually pretty bright, and I can see it quite easily, even at the angle that I'm operating it. So one of the things I want to do, um, it, like I said, it's got auto sequence, mains, line voltage, we got earth resistance, leakage modes, we got device current, ECG waveforms, and settings. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my meter into chassis. And then one of the first things that you always want to do, oh, sorry, also in the kit is this little adapter right here for zeroing out your probe. Let's just go ahead and put that over here because I am definitely gonna use that in just a minute. So one of the first things you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your probe is good. And the way that we are gonna do that is we are gonna go into earth resistance, all right? And you always do earth resistance first with electrical safety. And we have earth ground resistance, one ohm right here. It's this middle button. So we are gonna clip that on there. And now we're gonna take a look and see where we're at. And I have 0.997 ohms. That's pretty darn accurate, guys. So the first thing I'm going to do when I power this guy up out of the box, connect it to that button. We're going to check the leads to make sure that they're as close to one ohm as possible. And guess what? We have a zero leads button right here. And we're going to do that next. I'm going to zero the leads, pop it in here. You can see that it is going down quite steadily. I'm at 1.17, 1, yeah. Let's go ahead and zero it. But one of the things I want to draw your attention to is right here, there's an asterisk above the um, ohm symbol, and that shows you that you are in the zero leads mode. You hit zero leads again, and it shows you what you are at without the leads being zeroed. And as this guy comes up to temperature, you are gonna see that your ohms are gonna fluctuate, and that is a reality. If you are a site-by-site -site road warrior technician, you leave this guy in your car overnight, not recommended it's going to change temperature. And as it all changes temperature, your ohms are also gonna change. So here we are. Let's go ahead and go back to the main menu. Man, that touchscreen right there is very responsive. Very easy, very responsive. Nice date and time up here in the corner because it's gonna date and timestamp your entries. So one of the main features of this meter that I didn't tell you guys about yet is the fact that it does auto sequencing right up here at the very top it has auto sequencing built into this meter which a lot of other manufacturers do also but at a much higher price point this guy has a touch screen it looks modern it's got auto sequencing built in let's go ahead and check it out i have a device right here off to the side it is a light source and i'm going to go ahead and hook it up because we are going to do an auto sequence one of the things that I really think is essential for all of these electrical safety analyzers, any test equipment really, is the fact that it has to be intuitive. And I wanna be able to hand this meter off to a Biomed One, they take it and they run with it. The meter itself should show you how to use it. That is the future of test equipment. The meters need to be able to show you how to use them. And guess what? This guy does. So, uh, as soon as you go into auto sequence, we have custom sequences, which if you have certain devices, like let's say patient monitors or something, you can set it up for custom sequence and just run patient monitor, bam. Run uh, you know, a generic device. You can actually run different levels of electrical safety. We'll get into that in just a moment. So we have custom or we have fixed. I'm not gonna run custom. I'm gonna run fixed. It says device under test line, uh, line power mode on. So that tells you that one of the first things that you should do is turn the power on to your device under test. Um, I can put it on standby because remember during electrical safety, you're gonna be in one mode and then you're gonna have to change that mode, okay? Because you have to test it with the power off and the power on or you hit that button there, you know, and it starts with power on and later on it's gonna ask you to shut the power off. So 
In fixed modes, we have NFPA 99 generic, which is what I'm gonna do. We have NFPA 99 AP, we have NFPA 99 map, and then we also go into the uh, 6601, which we're not gonna use, we're gonna do NFPA 99 generic. As soon as I touch it, we go in, and right here I've got my options for leakage, ECG waveforms, and test settings over on the right-hand side. My test load, IEC or AMI test load, um, I'm going to go ahead and run IEC, uh, repeat auto sequence after a device under test power toggle. Yes, of course. It's very cool that I can uh, manipulate that right here because some devices I might not want to do that to, especially if they have a delicate computer inside them. Um, so we are on enclosure, we are set. So up here, navigational arrows left and right. Let's go ahead and click to the right. So here we are, uh, NFPA 99 generic. I'm going to go ahead and hit the next button. And now I have the option of inputting my device under test DUT information, asset ID, we've got manufacturer, model, serial number, uh, tested by, so I can put in my tech initials or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and proceed to test. This is very cool. One of the first things they want you to do is zero your test leads. You guys know that you should always zero your test leads, especially if you power the device up for the first time. Here we go. It's actually got a picture over here on the side that shows you what port to connect to and what you need to do to zero the test. This is that intuitiveness that I was telling you guys about. Don't make me guess, don't make me flip through some video online, and definitely don't make me flip through a user manual in the field. I have pictures. Storage nowadays is cheap. Why don't more manufacturers do that? I want a little picture showing me what I need to do to accomplish this test. Here we go. Um, so I do have one option that says don't remind until restart, but I'm gonna zero my leads. There we go, we're zero. Hit next. It says configure test setup. Connect the applicable connections from the device under test to the SA2600. Press the arrow when the device under test setup is ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna connect this bad boy over here. I'm gonna connect to the back on a ground stud. Boop. We are ready to go. Now remember, there was that option on the initial setup that said device under test power on. So my light source is currently on and I am ready to do this test. Boop. Testing mains at 123 volts. Resistance over limit, 1.5 ohms. It's got a little question mark up here that says resistance over the limit. And notice how it is not automatically proceeding with the test. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and test that. Resistance over the limit. The measured resistance is over the test limit. The test will not automatically continue until the resistance is below the limit. To save the current reading and continue testing, press the arrow. So I have the option of technically failing the test and pressing on. But why would you do that? If you don't have a good ground connection, it is absolutely useless to continue the test. I'm going to find another test point. And, and I like that the numerics stay up. So now I can fish around and find a better result. Over range, 20 ohms, okay, okay. So one of the things that is going on with my meter right here is that I have a painted surface on this device, which is something that we encounter all the time in the field. And this way here, I can fish around and find the best test point, to which on this particular device, the best test point is on the bottom. Oh, we're getting better. We're definitely getting better. You see that? There we go. So I found a good ground connection and look at that it just continues with the test how cool is that so the power on you can see that my light source is now on and it says turn on the dut just in case i forgot uh so they they did add that it's a little alert message that says hey go ahead and turn it on so we can do our leakage test continue very cool i i, I love it so far so I am at 3.8 amps, that's to be expected. This is a xenon light source. I've got 121 microamps 
with a lifted ground. Mind you, it's doing all that automatically. It says turn off the device under test. There we go. Continue. Love it. Love it, guys. 12.7 microamps with lifted ground. With ground connected, I have zero. Yes. Here we go. And my test summary. I am green for go. I've got test pass, and it gives me a little synopsis of what I found during this test. And we're done. It's that easy, guys. How cool is that? So I can go ahead and disconnect this guy, set it off to the side. I can export this. Like I said, it's Bluetooth, as you can see up here in the corner. So it will export this data over to their app, or I can also pull this data via some other means. So it'll generate a report and I can pull it that way. Um, very cool that it's so easy to use. I hit the back button, bam, here I am on the main screen all over again. And I love it. I love it, I love it. So one of the things I, I tell you guys about that is essential for me is utilizing your electrical safety analyzer as another tool. And two of the tools that you're gonna use it for probably the most is going to be testing device current. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy back in. So if you have a device that may be defective, I'm going to go ahead and use device current feature to safely test the current. And here you can see I'm pulling 3.9 amps. So here's the thing is I can go into my device data plate on the back of the device, read the amount of amps that it's supposed to pull, and I can check that versus my meter right here and see if maybe I have a defective item. I could have a shorted power supply. It's gonna dramatically pull more amps. I could have a bad motor. I could have a whole bunch of things, even an arcing uh, heating element. I will see that here on the amps. I love that that is part of the main screen. I dig it, guys. So let's go ahead and shut that guy off. Uh, one of the other cool things is the ECG waveforms. So you see a little descriptor right here, a little animation that shows you what you're asking for. So I got normal sinus rhythm pulse at 30 BPM, and I can change that, uh, 60 BPM, and as soon as I touch it, now I have an up and down arrow over here. So let's go ahead and flip through them, sine wave, and notice how the animation changes up here in the corner. That's a cool feature, I dig that. There we go, right there. Square wave, now you can actually use that for troubleshooting circuits and stuff. Square wave is also used for testing things like ECGs and the prints. Triangle wave, very cool. Normal sinus rhythm pulse, all right. Excellent. Well guys, that is definitely some improvements that I've seen on this device. And you know, the fact that this is a rugged, it, it, it's kind of Spartan in its design, but that's the beauty of it. Because as biomeds, we are not the nicest to our equipment. We need something that's durable, rugged, easy to use. I can hand this to any one of my biomeds and I have full faith that they're gonna be able to use it. So guys, that is a pretty good rundown on the SA2600 by BC Biomedical Group. Um, one of the other features that I really wanna show you guys, I didn't go over it, it's got two QR codes right on the back. It's got one for calibration and service, so if you need to get this device serviced, you scan that code right there, it'll take you to the form, and the contact info form, where you can report your device for calibration, etc. And then this one over here, is a QR code for the user manuals and additional materials. How cool is that? Why don't more manufacturers do that? Right on the back of the device, a QR code. Guys, QR codes are the future. We need to start using them a little bit more. I love that. If I hand this over to a biomed and they say they don't know how to use it, I tell them, look on the back. Scan the QR code. There's your user manual. You can read the user manual from your phone in the field. Very neat. That is it, that's the SA2600. I love it, it's a cool little device, brand new to the market. Look for it if you go to any of the trade shows like the upcoming Florida Biomed Society show, they're gonna have this on display. Come check it out, play with it in person, and uh, if anything, you can request a demo and see for yourself.
what BC Group has to offer. Thanks for watching, guys.